Come, Holy Spirit, and enkindle within us the fire of your burning love. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Good morning. The peace of Christ or the peace of Rome? The peace of Rome or the peace of Christ? Pax Romana, Pax Christi, which side do you choose? The peace of Rome equals empire, money, influence, and authority, and buying into a system that took care of an elite few, Pax Romana. Whereas the peace of Christ is about who Jesus was with, peasants without land, Poor people living on the edges. Overworked and underpaid people. The essential workers of the day. Shepherds, minimum wage earners, blind people, deaf people, slaves, women with no husbands, women with too many husbands. Who was scorned? Who was despised? It seems that's where Jesus' focus lies, Pax Christi. And on that first Palm Sunday, oh so long ago, Pax Romana and Pax Christi are on something of a collision course Because after spending three years preaching and teaching throughout the region, Jesus enters Jerusalem a final time. He comes to a city, a city on a hill, the city of ages with crowds all around because it's Passover, the holiest of the Jewish festivals, a time when Jewish people remember ages ago that Yahweh heard their cries, understood their pain, their pain as an oppressed people in Egypt, a people in bondage and took action. This is a time when the Jewish pilgrims from around Palestine journey up the hill to the city, to Jerusalem, to celebrate together as God's chosen people, God's striking an oppressive government and giving freedom to them. Thousands come to Jerusalem to remember, and some come with a longing for change. Jesus' disciples and followers, they come to Jerusalem hoping, waiting, and longing for him to show that he is the one for whom they have all been waiting. And they come with the prayer that he will rally the people and that they will once and for all throw off the yoke of Rome's oppression. And so when he asks for some of them to go into town and to find a cult upon which he can ride into the city, the devout ones among them remember an image from the prophet Zechariah Look, your king will come to you. He is righteous and victorious. He is humble, riding on a colt. And he will cut the chariot off from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the bow used in battle will be cut off. And he will speak peace to the nations. And his rule will stretch from sea to sea. They remember that. And they go in and they find the animal tied to the tree, just as he said. And they take it, and Jesus sits astride. And the people along the way, as he passes by, rejoice, and they throw their garments, and they, fall, and they throw palm fronds along his path, all in delight. And his disciples think to themselves, now 
The time has come now. But meanwhile, the feast of Passover is also marked by Rome. The foreign government oppressing the Hebrew peoples is very clear about this religious festival. For the Roman occupiers, this Jewish holy day is not about unleavened bread and sips of wine, but rather a gathering of thousands of people collectively remembering a time when an oppressive ruler was overthrown and they see thousands of people gathering who may now decide this is the time to riot. And Rome will not be left unprepared. And as Jesus makes his way into Jerusalem, so too do the Roman legions from the coast Hundreds and hundreds of soldiers on grand horses, burnished leather and gleaming swords, undeniable symbols of Rome's power to keep her peace, Pax Romana. And Jesus on the cult. I imagine with his sandals sliding in the dust, enters through one gate in the city of Jerusalem and the Roman legions enter through another gate and a collision course is set. The peace of Rome versus the peace of Christ. Can you see it all? Can you feel the dust, feel the beat of the sun, the heat on your skin? There's also now a similar choice that remains for us, friends. There is, in this country, a status quo that is perpetuated by powerful lobbies, in particular the National Rifle Association that says it is not within our rights to protect the people in our country, the women in our country, the children in our country, the men in our country from brutal, deadly mass shootings. Pax Romana maintains the status quo. Then array is Pax Romana. Maintaining the status quo at what cost, with whose lives. And friends, why is it in Georgia that it is now illegal to give someone food or drink who may be standing in line to vote? And here in Michigan, Bills have been introduced in our own legislature seeking to prevent the Secretary of State from posting applications for absentee ballots online. Pax Romana lives in fear of change. Pax Christi the peace of Christ seeks what could be an unsettling change for some of us. Yet God, in the person of Jesus Christ, calls for this change and calls for all of us to break bread. All, all, all to be at the table all welcomed, all loved, 
all included, even all deciding upon the menu to be served at that table. The peace of Christ, the peace of Christ does not fear change. It, the peace of Christ does not fear inclusion of all people. But the peace of Christ does not happen the way Jesus' followers thought it would. Rome wasn't overthrown that weekend. Rome wasn't overthrown in a gleaming moment. Violence and fear did not rule the day. Instead, the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, rode the cult into the city and broke bread with believers, believers, believers who would betray him, deny him, and run from his death. But Jesus Christ stayed. And he was tortured and crucified and died. And on that moment, at that moment on the Hill of Skulls, it seemed as if Pax Romana had prevailed. But we know better, for on that third day, everything changed. Friends, in this time, in this place, in this holy week, we again stand in the crowds. And we are there watching Christ go by. And my question for all of us, is will our lives, will our loves, will our actions reflect the fear and the status quo of Pax Romana? Or will we seek change and inclusion and relinquish fear and embrace a love, a love which passes all understanding. The choice is ours. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.